Hi, everyone. Welcome to the virtual event space. Oh my gosh, I am so sorry. Welcome to the virtual event space of Books and Books, your locally owned and independent bookstore in South Florida. I am Christina Russell. I am the book buyer for our children's and YA sections for the stores. Um, and we're really excited tonight to talk to two amazing authors, Meredith Ireland and Justin A. Reynolds. And we're super happy that we get to take part in the uh, launch month festivities for Meredith's debut novel, The Jasmine Project. I think this is going to be a really fun conversation, and um, I'm going to start things off by reading their formal bios, then I will tell you a little bit about your screen, um, and then I'll hand it off and see you in a little bit for a Q&A. So, about Meredith. Um, Meredith Ireland was born in Korea and adopted by a New York librarian. Her love of books started early, and although she pursued both pre-med at Rollins College and law at the University of Miami, stories were her fate. She currently resides with her two children and Bob, a carnival goldfish who's likely a person. She writes young adult books, some of which you may like. The Jasmine Project is her debut novel. And then our conversant tonight is Justin A. Reynolds. Justin A. Reynolds has always wanted to be a writer. Opposite of always, his debut YA novel was an Indies Introduced Top 10 debut, a school library journal best book of 2019, translated into 19 languages and is being developed for film by Paramount Players. His second YA novel, Early Departures, published to critical acclaim and was a Kirkus Reviews Best of 2020. His debut middle grade novel, a Miles Morales graphic novel titled Shockwaves that published in June of 2021, was an indie bestseller. Justin is also the co-founder of the CLE Reads Book Festival, a Cleveland book festival for middle grade and young adult writers. He hangs out in Northeast Ohio with his family and is probably somewhere right now uh, dancing terribly. So a little bit about your screen is um, the first thing I want to mention is this big green button below me. Um, whether you are watching live or watching later, this green button will take you to purchase a copy of The Jasmine Project. You're, of course, welcome to pick up any of Justin's books or anything you'd like, and we very much appreciate your um, your support. Um, we can ship books anywhere in the world and also prepare them for pickup at any of our Miami locations. Um, and then the second thing about your screen is for the Q&A portion, we would very much appreciate you using the ask a question button, which is in the bottom right hand corner. It says ask a question. Um, we'll get those um, asked before the end of the night. And that is it for me. I'm going to go ahead and bring on Meredith and Justin. Bear with me a second. Oh, oh, there we go. All right. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. It's the, 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 the day has arrived when I finally get to talk to you. Ready to do this? Yeah, about this about about this book here. Um first of all, how are you doing? How's it how's it how's it feel to have a book out in the real world uh, where you can no longer keep it safe and protect, <laughs> protected and all that good stuff, you know? How's that feel? It's pretty wild. Um, I know I'm luckier than most authors who debuted in this pandemic in that um, I was able to actually go into my local indie, Northshire, and sign copies and have a whole little signing table um with my children trying to like wet their beak on the action and like sign some copies and get some stuff uh their nana was there so uh they made out like little bandits um, so my children are very much looking forward to my next signing uh in fall i believe um but yeah it's it's kind of it's surreal. It hasn't sunk in yet that I'm going to be able to walk into bookstores and see my book. Yes, it's it's uh, I actually like I have to send you the picture. I actually took a picture of your book at at um, one of the bookstores near me. So, yeah, I'm equally excited. It's it's crazy because uh, I was fortunate enough to, to kind of like hear about this project from you um, a while back and then now to like see it um and also like it's coming at i mean you, you talked about the pandemic it's coming at like such a a time in which i think we all just kind of want like some feel good like heartstrings happy 
you know, romance, love, like big family situation stuff. And and I think it's like perfect timing for that type of narrative. Um, and so I'm really excited about it. Um, and I'm happy to talk about it. I guess we should probably, like you should probably pitch it or something. Should we, do you want to like pitch, sure, your, pitch your story? Yeah. Um, so the Jasmine Project is the elevator pitch is it's my big fat Greek wedding meets the Bachelorette a la Jenny Han. So it is this girl who has this kind of enormous family in Orlando, uh, Florida, and um, she has kind of settled for safe in every aspect of her life. She is going to follow in her mother's footsteps and become a nurse, even though that's not really the thing that excites her. She has been dating the same guy um, since freshman year of high school, and she's going to move in with him, even though she knows that the relationship is not the best. And then when her family realizes that he's been seeing other girls, they decide to organize this bachelorette style competition where um, they select three boys to date her over the summer uh, that she and her ex, not ex-boyfriend, are supposed to be a part um, to try to show her that she's worth more. And it's really, I think at its core, um, the story about self-worth and self-love and self-discovery. No, I love it. Yeah, no, it's, it's uh... First of all, kudos to like the great um, elevator pitch because I think that was like the thing that I struggled with the most when I first was trying. Like people would say, I, and it was weird about it is like it's almost as if I didn't know that people were going to say, "Hey, tell us about your, <laughs> tell us what your book is about," <laughs> and then I would be like, "Wait, oh, uh, you know, it's got some love and uh, people doing things." Um, so props to that. No, but the book is like is so much fun. I love the comparison that you made of um, um, my uh, big fat Greek wedding and also um, Jenny Han. And then what was, oh, and The Bachelor or Bachelorette. Mm -hmm. um, what is it about, like, what is it about, like, writing about love? Like, is it because you are just kind of a person who, like, really loves a good rom com? Is it because, uh like we all kind of want to believe that in the end like love will conquer all and, and like prevail like what is it about like love stories and like a good romance uh uh that that kind of like pulls you in so it's a it's a few di different things like i love rom-coms i love watching them um when they're done well like i think I would say the recent ones that I've watched, a couple are, it, there's an art to it because they have to be funny. And um, a lot of people don't nail the humor quite the way they should. Um, but I always actually, in everything I read, truly no matter how depressing, I am looking for that like romantic thread to like root for, truly, no matter how messed up it is, no matter, you know, how unlikely it is. Like I was reading They Both Die at the end and I'm like, I think they make it guys, you know? Like, um, like just truly like a sucker for love and a sucker just for watching somebody learn more about themselves through falling in love. Yeah, no, that's so true. It's like, I'm also a big like sucker for a good rom-com. I think like what you said though is so interesting because I, I think, you know, we 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 root for like the love story portion in all these books, even when it's like, like so hard to believe in the plot or the premise or whatever, because we're just like, I don't, I don't really care about, you know, <laughs> what forces are keeping people apart. Like I just wanna have all the feelings. But the thing that I feel like you do really well that I think sometimes unfortunately comes up short in rom coms is like the is the com, the comedy. Um, because it's easier said than done. Like it's hard to be funny mm -hmm. on the page. It's not like you can be funny in real life and just be like super witty and just coming at it and, and cracking everyone up. But to be funny on a page in which like no one is really hearing your voice, your inflection, your tone, like 
it's a totally different piece. Like, how did you like, like, what is, is, what is your approach? Are you just like, okay, this makes me laugh. Then, then I think it's going to make other people laugh. Like, are you, are you like, how do you come up with jokes? Is it just a situation? You're like, okay, like what is it about this situation that could go wrong? Because that's oftentimes what happens in these, in these kind of situations where everything in that love scene that should have been like, okay, all the feels ends up being, you know, some kind of, some kind of gag or, or, uh, or accident or what have you. Like, how do you decide where to insert the comedy? I think it's a different kind of humor. Like there are people who are truly funny in life and it is because of mannerisms and timing and yeah. the timing is already there on the page. Twitter is the same way. The timing <laughs> is already there because people are going to read the timing oh, in. Yeah. Um, you know, so that part, like, which I am not great about in person, um, is already there for you. Um, but it is a different animal to, mm. you have to either circle in, when it's in literature, you either have to circle back to like finish the joke, or you have to, um, basically if I was going through and it still made me laugh, uh, you know, on the 187th read through as we do <laughs> in caveat it's in proofreading and like they switch seven commas so you need to read it again. Um, from the start, uh, if it's still making me laugh exactly. then, then I know I have something. And it really did, like there was, a moment in which she calls herself the slowest donkey in Donkeyville. And like every single time I got to that page, I was laughing, you know, because it just yeah. suited her so well. Um, so yes, making yourself laugh is probably most important there. Yeah, no, it's so true. It's like, I definitely, um, like I, I um, and am not above uh, being like super corny or, or delivering like the easy joke, just because I think like, uh, we all want to laugh, right? We all kind of, we, we want to. And I think like when you're reading these books, like you kind of want to get to that point anyway. And then if the person is writing something that you kind of like, you can kind of relate to, which I think in this case you, you can, cause it's like here, here you are just trying to figure out, trying to make sense of the world that you're in you have a situation that you've been in that like you're that you have investment in time and investment in and and love even right but then you come to realize that it's not completely true that there that there are holes in in that romance that you have and so now suddenly you're kind of trying to reevaluate a moment ago you were willing to like put things on hold you know in the story and and like figure out and make sacrifices for this, for, for what you thought was like true love, or at least you felt like secure in the love that you had. And now all of a sudden, um, Jasmine's like, wait, hold on. You know, like what, what is there? Fortunately, she has her large, uh, lovable, sometimes annoying family um, <laughs> to, to, to help her out. Um, how was it like, right? So you do this cool thing like where throughout the text you have, they, they have like these group messages and you'll have like, it feels like like a thousand people <laughs> like being able to kind of like jump into there. But the cool thing about it is that you really do nail the voice. So like I can I can almost take away the tags and not have and not know it and kind of have a like a, a sense of who's saying what. Like how did you work on like those group taxes, like composing that kind of thing and like making it they're I mean they're hilarious, first of all. So thank you. I mean, part of it was definitely you needed strong personalities. Otherwise, they were going to wash out in group text and everybody was going to sound like they were just talking to themselves. Like it was just one guy just talking to himself in different, like 50 different voices. Um, so I also feel like my family members, they don't have the big group chats, but like you'll know who's talking based on what they're saying. Like the Aunt Tammy always asking, you know, who's in jail when somebody says something's gone wrong. Like, you have that relative who's like, stop, hold up, who's in jail? You know, what, who do we need to bail out? Um, so, and then the bickering cousins, like, uh, you know, the one who like kind of fancies himself as this, this player who's in med school, like, exactly. you have those relatives. And so I think part of the relatability is you're playing off of 
the fact that people have people like this in their lives, yeah. a lot of people do that anyhow. Yeah. Maybe not no. as funny, but. Yeah, um, no, I mean, I think not as funny. <laughs> <laughs> not as funny. You know, and my family still doesn't think I'm funny. Um, <laughs> what? This is crazy. Know. Uh, I always like, first of all, I mean, not to whatever, but I always say like, oh, like you're so, you're so funny, especially on Twitter. It's like, I'll, I'll, I'll be like, I, there's one time I was like composing a tweet that it was like relevant to something that had happened. And then I look at yours and you, you had already like made a joke about it. And then I just like, I think I just like shut down Twitter. I was like, I'll forget it. Cause like, I just think, <laughs> no, I think, no, seriously. I mean, I'm not, I'm not even joking. Like, I think that like you, there's an art to it. Um, I mean, obviously you have limited characters and like somehow you, it's like, I always think about like when you're telling jokes, especially to an audience that's like wide and you have no idea like where it's landing, mm -hmm. like there's a measure of truth to it at first, right? First you're starting off with something that everybody identifies with, something that's real and like honest. And then you're just kind of like making this observation a lot of times, I, especially like I found like yours, where it's like, oh yeah, like that's what everybody thinks about that situation. Or like, I know exactly how you feel in that moment. And now it's like, it's like you're laughing at it because you're kind of like one kind of laughing at yourself a little bit, but also you're just like, it's this relief in knowing that you're not the only person who's like, you know, screwing up out here uh, in the world <laughs> and like, you know, just trying to like fumble around in the dark and, and make sense of the world. Um, so no, that's, no, that, that's, that's great. Um, Tell us about your process. So like when you set up, okay, like a quick, a quick rapid fire. What is it? What is your, do you have a go-to, do you have a snack? Do you snack when you write? Actually, I'm asking questions I don't even know, like the answer to. I don't no, know about I, your process. I like so. like yeah, we, yeah. we actually don't know this. I don't um, actually know the answer, yeah. No, I don't, I don't snack when I write. I break, I like I keep my food in the kitchen and I mm. break for, like it also gets me out of my chair. Otherwise, I'll sit here all day. Uh -huh. um, I usually have like. That's what I'm doing wrong. I need to <laughs> put the yeah, snacks yeah. in the yeah, other room. So much wrong with, like, <laughs> put the snacks in the other room. Coming out over the next two or three years. <laughs> oh my god! Just... No, yeah, no. I'm like, I definitely <laughs> am snacky. Like, I, I actually, so I had to, I had to like change the snacks because. I was like, okay, if I want to be able to write like a couple more books, I probably can't sustain the level of like irresponsible eating that's happening. Like, wow, because <laughs> it's almost just like ritualistic. I don't even pay attention to what I'm doing, and I'll be like, oh, where's what happened to that 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 thing of a uh, of a uh, of a uh, peanut butter filled pretzel? I mean, uh, pretzel. Did I just say right? Peanut butter. Peanut butter. Pretzel filled. Right. Pretzel. Thing. Yeah, it's whatever that is. Yes, thank you. I don't know for no, some reason it's like words don't sound right in my mouth. No, oh yeah, the uh, they're they're uh, pretzels filled with peanut butter, right? Okay. The little little things. They're kind of like combos, but it's all pretzel. Like a, like a bougie version. Of <laughs> yes, it's actually what the branding is. It actually says we're just like <laughs> combos, like, but bougier. Combos, but one <laughs> you, Yeah, Here's exactly. That's thing. actually it's their $5. elevator pitch. Yes, their elevator pitch. Like you like combos, <laughs> but do you? But do you also want to have like an elevated sense of self? And then, and then that, <laughs> and then, and then you eat those those pretzels. Um, so I eat a lot of those because I need to feel better about myself. Um, Okay. What about like, are you uh like, what time of day are you writing? Are you like write a lot early in the morning? Are you a late night writer? You write whenever you can. Like, how do you, how does that work? Never early in the morning. I'm not a morning person. There's nothing in my decades of life that has changed this, but I love that. Like as a kid, they like tried to like kind of pull the wool over your eyes and be like, no, when you turn like 20, you're going to totally be a morning. And then like that, then it doesn't never, it never happens. And then it's like, with a it's charade. It's true. Um, it's true. I like to revise in the day, like okay, daytime. Kids are gone, um, like ten to four. Whenever I hit the mission returns, I feel like I'm the most aware and on, and it's you know revisions, precision work. Um, and then I love drafting at night. Mm. I actually started drafting my YA3 um, 
Virginia takes the crown. Yeah. Uh, I started drafting that um, at one in the morning. And, you know, that's not ideal. Like, that's not a way for anybody to live. But <laughs> there's something about glory and muses when you, like, get to that, like, almost exhausted, but kind of, like, freer part of your day where, you're, like, your mind is kind of unwinding that allows the story to, like, just use you as this little, like, keyboard meat puppet. And then, yeah, it's a really glamorous way to discuss <laughs> writing. Keyboard meat puppet. No, I feel like the more you talk to, like, writers, like, if you had any kind of, like, notion of, like, glamour or, like, <laughs> romanticizing, like, what it actually is, and then you talk to, like, a writer and, and they're just, like, uh, you know, I'm just trying to find like my keyboard among all of these pretzel crumbs and also like uh, <laughs> hope that the muse comes to me. Then like, then you're like, oh, okay, okay, I feel better. You're like, oh man, um, is he sitting there eating combos? Like, exactly, he's like, like bougie like, combos? That's what I mean about going back around. Exactly, exactly. Like, you know, it's true, you come back around. You come back, that's, come that's, 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 that's what makes comedy go. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, what about, what do you prefer, revision or original drafting? Like what's, what's yeah. like, you, you like you prefer drafting? I don't even have words for somebody who prefers revising. Like this, that's <laughs> like, wait. I don't to, like, know because we make this better. <laughs> like it's great because it does make it better, or very much worse. Like it's hard to say. But um, I love the I love telling myself the story, and like one half of my brain is working real hard on this, the other half is like, oh, that's surprising, um, because I'm surprising myself with how. The voice comes together and how the scenes come together and how mm. something like can kind of interweave later that i was like oh that was important up front and i like that aspect of surprising myself yeah um revision is work i mean it's it's where things go from conception and idea to an actual book and so that that does have merit i just have nothing to say for people justin is it your favorite is that what you're about to tell me that you prefer it you know, you know i mean I, so the honest so truth is like currently it feels like a toss-up for me um they both feel like a lot of work <laughs> they both feel like a lot of work um i here's the thing is like you know i think it's just different and I, this is going to sound like real like uh um oh my god like you know i hate getting to write all these books but like with my first book you know i wrote it like in a vacuum like nobody was waiting for that book right. so the drafting process was like amazing i was like oh my god this is it's so much fun and you know i'm just like <laughs> making myself laugh at moments and just like this is oh i'm so clever this is great oh <laughs> this is just coming together like magically and it, sometimes I just take my hand off the keyboard and the keys would just keep clack, like, clacking. It was, just, it was like amazing. And, uh, and then like, 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 uh, like magical, like ponies came and like took the, the manuscript and they like, they, they, they sent it to wherever magical ponies go. And, and then it was great. And I was go, but not so much with the, uh, subsequent books. Uh, there, there was not as much magic, uh, at least in my second book, um, in terms of just like, Oh wow, this is amazing. And I think the difference for me is like one, like I sold a I like I sold a concept, not a book, right? So the book right. when I when I write, like I I I get bored or I change my mind with something. Or I'm like, uh, like maybe I should just change the entire premise of this entire story, even though I'm like, you know, 35,000 words in, like this is is this working? <laughs> and so I think that it's different, like when somebody is like you sold just an idea. And you don't even know if it's gonna work yet. And then people are like, it better work because we're waiting for it. <laughs> you know, like, here's your deadline and then you're dressed. So I think that like maybe that's probably where I'm coming from. I think, I think now I'm at the point where I kind of like, I just really want to just sell books that I already I've already read. <laughs> like I was I think for me, I think that's kind of like that'll be where I'm able to truly like kind of find that that saying, like, I guess magic for lack of a better word where it's like mm -hmm. this is just belongs to me i think is what i'm just trying to say and i think that's to me that's the fun part where it's like this is just mine and i get to like make mistakes and i get to like fumble through it and find out who these characters are and if and if i you know if i fall in love with it and, and you know and, and and fall in love with the characters then like it's an amazing but if it's not quite there yet it's okay too you know and i think that 
is probably the difference. I actually don't mind, like, if I think that the book, if I'm, like, excited about the book still, which to me is kind of the key to, like, whether or not I think a book has, like, staying power, if I can continue the book, it's like, am I still having fun doing it? Am I still, even though it's, like, one million time, am I still, like, if there's something about it that I'm still excited about? Um, right. But I think that, uh, yeah, like, for, like for, for me, it's just a matter of um, not the revision part is, Okay, I have something that I like now. Nah, just like, especially if I have great notes from my editor. So like, okay, how can I now just like clean all that up and make that joke funnier, or make that like swoon moment like swoonier, or mm -hmm. uh, you know? And so that part is kind of fun to me. It's like you already got the shape of the sculpture, and now it's just like here's some fine details that mm -hmm. like elevate it, hopefully to 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 its like best self. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, but like anyone like listening, don't take anything I say for whatever gospel because uh, the thing about it is like there's so many ways to write, right? Like there's uh, it's like there's no there's no wrong way. Whatever gets it done, I guess is is amazing. Um, let's see, is there any book that you've read recently that you're like, okay, I want to like shout the praises of this book from all the book mountain tops that didn't make sense you know funny enough uh yes i read this book i wouldn't say it was recently it was probably oh i guess two years ago um called the opposite of like oh what book is this i was like oh it's like this is great I, 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 let me write this down <laughs> And I thought it was great. I loved the specific twist to what is, you know, I, well, you know, it is a love story. It's a love mm -hmm. story that's not coming to fruition because they, you know, keep dying. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's it a great way to do it and, and how you can have really good intentions if you love who you love and you can't stop yourself yeah. and you have these really good intentions to make things better and actually actively make things worse than the yeah. other time around yeah. i loved seeing that both those things because i love absolutely adore the you love who you love and you cannot help yourself mm -hmm. like you're going yep. to keep falling in love with this same person over and over again again no matter how you meet no matter what happens um, and then the, yes, you will, you can make everything worse by trying to avoid that fate or trying to make things better. No, it's no, first of all, thank you. Um, uh, after the next time, not fully bring my, my water to my lips um, as, you, <laughs> as I'm asking you a, a question. Uh, but no, uh, yeah, no, honestly, I, and we've never even talked about it like that. Um, Nope. So this is like, no, we are I appreciate it. Here. No, is that living? And, and that's awesome because like, that's honestly like the thing I think that I take from it myself the most is, you know, yeah, you love who you love. And like, I think that, you know, a lot of people always talk about like, oh, insta love. And I personally don't hate it the way that a lot of people hate it because I think there's a chemical reaction sometimes that happens where you're just like, I know somehow this person is important. I don't know like if they're gonna be the, my forever person, but like something about this person is giving me not just the feels, but like there's like a like a magnetism that isn't just one sided. Like we're 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 like meeting in the middle, and it's supposed to be. And I believe in that. And I, I think a lot of times though, maybe that doesn't translate to romantic love. Maybe that's just like platonic friendship love that happens. And I think you just kind of know you like you'll be in a room, and you're vibing with somebody, and you're like oh like. I think we're friends now, you know, and then and then you are. Um, but I think the thing I most take away from that book is like it's about this kid who's just like earnest and eager to like um, try to be a good friend, try to be a good son. Uh, but he constantly makes mistakes, even though he has a good heart and is trying to figure out a way to kind of make everyone win and have everyone get what mm -hmm. they want. In reality, as we all know, uh, it's not really possible to, 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 to do that. And so I think it's like, you can have the best intentions and still hurt people, right? Um, 
and you can have the best intentions and 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 still not get what you want but i think if you're if like the motivation is right if in the end like your heart is set on okay i i just want to see the best happen for the people that i love um then even when you get it wrong like you're still kind of close like right you're going to keep pushing through it because it matters to you and you and you care about what happens in the end and even if you have to you know tra uh, travel through time multiple times to do it you you're going to you're going to you're going to do it and you're going to and you're not going to like run away from it um so yeah that's that's something that I think about a lot uh, uh in terms of my own life minus of course like the the time travel part of it which <laughs> is is pretty much the, the the main part of it um okay wait what time is how much time do we have okay is that our time there are we like uh, just about do you want to talk about next projects oh yeah let's do that let's do that so mine, I'm oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> no, you're good. Hi. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> um, so mine is uh, Everyone Hates Kelsey Miller, and it, it'll be out um, fall. And I should actually be, I, I, I don't know when covers will be public, but I'm actually getting a cover soon. What? So, yeah. I feel sorry for everybody else who's not going to get to see this cover, not name me. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally gonna DM it to you. Um, but so it's enemies to lovers. It is a two rival for for valedictorian at their hyper competitive high school. Um, take an extremely ill advised road trip to the University of Pennsylvania. Um, overnight to try to win back their exes. One has been ghosted by his summer girlfriend and the other one has been broken up with by her best friend and they don't quite understand why and all they want to do is get back to good and so that's everyone hates kelsey miller wow i i mean i heard you talk about this book before every time you talk about it it sounds better and better that concept i was like oh and for, for a second i kind of forgot what the other part of it was and i was like that's that's the book that I'm I'm trying to write. Um, but but no, then you but then you gave us the rest, and I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> um, uh, no, yeah, that's awesome. I think the next the next thing for me is um, let's see what's coming out next. Oh, uh, it's the end of the world, and I'm in my um bathing suit. And that that's uh yeah. that's out next year. Um, and it's basically like it's kind of like a uh a hybrid of like all the movies and stuff that I loved growing up and kind of back in the day where you'd kind of have like a shiny moral of the story kind of embedded in there. It's like, you know, whether it's like uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, and it's like, yo, we can just find a way to like get over our differences and realize that we're really just the same. And also you don't know what your neighbors are going through. That's, there's a reason why they're jerks um, or whatever it is, you know, and then let's band together and, and like, ride some some ride the back of bees because we're, we're really small <laughs> um but all those like home alone uh don't mm -hmm. tell mom the babysitter's dead it's kind of like that vibe so it's basically like this kid devises a plan that he is going to only do laundry one day the entire summer and so he's going to wear everything that he has uh in his closet and drawers to completion until the midpoint which he has calculated perfectly arrives in which it will be the day of uh, the town, the biggest party in the town called Beach Bash. And he only has the swim chunks left. So it's perfect timing. He's gonna take, where's the swim chunks, where's his flip flops and go about his business. But then his parents kind of find out and they put the kibosh on it and they tell him that he has to first do his laundry uh, before he can go to the party. But before he can even finish the one load, lo and behold, the power goes out and possibly the end of the world is nigh so that's the that's the uh that's the story there that sounds adorable yeah it's uh that is an adult book <laughs> no no it's, it's me <laughs> <laughs> thriller. Thriller. uh yeah that's a thriller yeah it's a thriller <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was actually one of my questions for you guys was what is next um but i'm gonna yeah. take it off here and i'm Maybe gonna ask on you it. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask you, what was your favorite part of while writing um, the Jasmine Project? Probably the family group text. 
Um, they were just so much fun. Um, her family has so much spirit and so much love for her too. Like they can argue and they can bicker and they can make crack jokes, but they all love each other and they all love her at the end of the day. Is there um, any piece of advice that you guys wish you'd gotten earlier in your career, like in regards to writing? Funny. It's like, is everybody frozen? <laughs> uh, read current books in the genre you want to write in. I would say read three to five within the last two years of whatever genre category because that's how you figure out where that genre and category are and what's working in them. You know, read ones that are well reviewed because there's so many books out. Uh, what ones that are well received or that um, you know have starred reviews? Fun times. Um, like the Jasmine Project. Yeah. But it just it shows you so much of voice and um, pacing and plotting and just read for craft. And that would be the most um, important advice that I got that I didn't listen to at first because I'm like, Shh, I got this. I've read Emily Bronte. I'm good to go. But uh, <laughs> yeah, Wait, she did. So she, is she coming out with a book like in the next year? I mean, Bronte, she's yeah. like, when's her next? When's her next thriller coming out? Is it coming out? <laughs> she's really talented. She's really talented. I think she's gonna go places. Um, uh, for me, it would be like trust your voice because for the longest time, especially just kind of like receiving like some formal training at school or um, reading the books of people that I deeply admired. I just wanted to be like them and I emulated their voice. And so I, or like, you know, I could be like a perfect, I could like perfectly parrot this particular author's voice and style because I had read them so much that like, I felt like I was like almost an extension uh, of, of, of their of their writing hand, you know, like <laughs> that's weird. But yeah, it's true. Uh, that's actually my next book too, is like you, you um, are in this, the, this, you haunt a writer's hand and then they can tell stories they don't want to tell. But that is, um, but no, trust your voice. I think once I finally like realized, okay, like all of that writing that I did before, in which I was kind of mimicking other people, um, it wasn't it wasn't for not. It just taught me how to write, right? And now it's like, okay, mm -hmm. take all of what you learned, the fundamentals of writing, and what makes a good story, and what makes it makes the pace perfect, and like how to um, interject levity in a in a very you know tense, taut situation. Um, and and but now do it with your voice like write it in the way that only you would write it like however like those strange thoughts that you have in your head where you're just like laughing to yourself and like no one other people will think you're corny or just kind of be like what's wrong with you like write that that way because that's the thing that you bring to the page that no one else has is just the way that you would write it and the way that you see the world and um and i think and i think ultimately like the thing that I always look for in new and new storytellers is like the voice, like how I, it does the voice, the narrative voice speak to me? Does it sing? There's a difference when you're like, okay, wow, I'm in great hands. I could tell that this person knows, um, they have a strong sense of self and, uh, and they know what they're, they know what they want to say and how they want to say it. So trust your voice. What about covers? Do you guys have, um, I know this like authors get asked this a lot, so I'm sorry, but um, do you guys have, or did you want to have any say in your cover process or were you both just like surprised for Justin, it'll be your most recent cover, I guess. Uh, my most recent cover is, uh, is uh, it, it'll be the Miles Morales thing. And I had zero say in that uh, because we have an illustrator and it'd be like, you know, we, you know, I didn't want him yeah. to try to tell me how to write the board, how to write the story. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't tell him how to draw the pictures. Uh, but uh, prior to that, uh, yeah, I've, I've been like fortunate enough. I've, I've had like some input, um, and and on my my on early departures and opposite of always. The the cool thing is we also um, were able to have the same artist, um, Stephanie Singleton, work on those covers, and so there's like continuity to it even kind of in the color tone, the palette, um, and the style of it. So yeah, no, I, I, um, I'm fortunate that my, my publisher and my editor and the team there, like, you know, care about, allow me to have input in a situation in which you don't necessarily have to have. 
employee. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so they actually gave me um, a fair amount of input in this because they don't have to. Um, one of the things is whether your contract has it in or not. You don't, you never have, I think there are very, very few authors who have like final say. They, they usually phrase it as like meaningful input. Um, so they, they did manage to do that. So the Jasmine Project, um, the writing was a little different. Um, the, I wanted the actual text. So these are from the family group text over here. Um, her expression changed, um, the like holding the phone like that, and then the little nod to the bachelorette of having the rose on the case, those were from me. But the illustrator did an amazing job and they were they were um, really understanding in my, you know, well, you know, how about we just change the two and you know what, you know, how about the stripes in her shirt are a little thinner, you know, like things like that, um, just to make it, um, I think more your own, although it's weird, because you're working through an illustrator, um, who does an amazing job at taking, you know, get her hair like a little, you know, whatever, um, like, a, like a little better, and they actually can like understand what you're saying, and then um, give you a updated design. That's really fun, though, that you got to like, add in little details like that, and make it feel more you, you know? Um, so my last question of the night is um, for both of you. If there, are there any YA books that you've read in the last year or two besides each other's, because you guys already did that, <laughs> um, that you that you can't stop recommending, that you, that you just think everyone should read? This is actually a phenomenal segue. You don't even know how good it is. Um, so the authors who I was uh, on my book tour with are um, Jen Dugan, who has Some Girls Do, which is phenomenal. It is so good. It is this beauty queen um, who is um, bi, and she um, winds up kind of falling for this girl who's kind of out and proud based on the scandal that had happened in her old high school, uh, who's a, a track star. And it's just it's phenomenally well done. And then um, Karen McManus has um, The Cousins out, and that's right here. Um, and I think it's her best yet. Um, I really loved it. It's these three cousins who are trying to like get back into like the family good graces and fortune, uh, who go to this island off of Massachusetts for the summer. And, you know, it's a typical Karen book, which means it's extremely well written, it's entertaining, and it just flies. Um, Amisa Segura wrote um, Love and Other Natural Disasters, and that is one that the voice just grabs you from the very start. And so why this is such a good segue is to celebrate the end of my book launch. Um, I would love to give away um, you pick the copy, whether it's Early Departures, The Cousins, Some Girls Do, or Love and Other Natural Disasters, and I will send you a signed copy along with the signed The Jasmine Project, and I'll have details on Instagram and Twitter for that. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I would say, I was like trying to look around. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest, like I'm reading kind of like all over the place right now, um, but I, I the book that I thought about um is a book i was trying to figure out when it actually comes out um but it's by ashley woodfolk and it's uh a, a, oh, a, 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 uh yeah she's like one of my favorite writers she's a, she's a friend but also like honestly before i knew her i was like mesmerized by her work um uh but uh, it's called nothing burns as bright as you um and it mm -hmm. is a um a novel in verse and it's gorgeous i mean like I wish I could just quote there. Are, I do actually know lines from it. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm probably not supposed to quote from it, but it's beautiful. Um, it's haunting. It's about, you know, about, about a relationship and kind of like where you're this all consuming relationship and then kind of the, how you can be so attached to another person that you feel like everything about them um, is somehow like 
related back to back to you and and like everything they do somehow informs like your perspective and it's kind of like that one love where you're just like man i could easily lose myself in this person like forever like i just it's quite we're almost where it's like you're not even sure if that's how it's supposed to be because it's so it's so like all encompassing and so that's that book um but the book that she wrote before that that you actually can purchase now is um uh when you were everything and that is um probably to me like i i think it's her best book yet um other than nothing burns as right as you it's it's a book about that kind of looks at a friendship from the other way and it shows kind of the uh a friendship that was su super tight and then it kind of shows how these things can unravel in ways that are complicated and you know um wrought with tension and sometimes feelings of betrayal and um it's just it's just like if you want to ever kind of just be in your feelings like read read ashley uh with folk and you'll 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 get there uh, for sure and then the other book uh um white slow came out that's uh by tiffany d jackson that just came out um yesterday and uh that book is like so if you know tiffany d jackson you know she is all about thrillers and um a lot of um kind of like ripped from the headline type stories and this is not that this is uh uh a horror story in your face scare you don't go to sleep kind of thing um <laughs> because because uh you're you're afraid um that I would I would say definitely check out White Smoke. Uh, you won't be disappointed. Thank you both for like a good list of books. There, <laughs> I love asking that question. So um, I want to thank you both for hanging out with us tonight and congratulate you again, Meredith, on your debut. Um, we're very excited to have your book on our shelves at all of our locations, um, and we hope to celebrate your next launch with you as well. Hopefully in person, we can make that happen or, you know, either way, we'll be here. Um, and thank you so much for joining and, and being such a wonderful conversant, Justin. This was a really, really fun talk. Um, thanks also, of course, to everyone who tuned in. Again, this green button below us, whether you're watching now or later, um, will take you to purchase your copy of The Jasmine Project from Books and Books. Um, and we're here almost every night of the week doing virtual events. Um, we're open at all of our locations in Miami, and we super appreciate everyone's support tonight. So, thank you. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Books and Books. Thanks, Meredith. Bye. <laughs>